Today, uh, when I was asked to present um, counting down to college, um, 9th through 12th grade, I thought, well, that's a lot of information to cover and put into a one hour presentation or less. Um, so we've used these handouts I gave you as your guide. Um, as I mentioned, they're found in the course catalog, um, Prince William County course catalog, which is linked to your student's high school at Battlefield. It's linked under the students. You can find it at Prince William County homepage. Um, it's in the beginning pages. Also, great, lots of great information. You can find graduation requirements in there. Um, you can find um, how to calculate a GPA. I get that question a lot. You can find what weighted courses and what the weights are. So lots of great information, including course descriptions. Um, you see, the one handout I gave you is a checklist to make sure that your child is on track for graduation. Um, this is for current 9th through 12th grade um, students. Do I? Let me just get a survey of the room. Do I have any 8th grade parents in here? Welcome. Oh, a lot. That's wonderful. So this is going to be an overview for you. If there is an addition to the graduation requirement, um, my understanding there's a CPR addition, um, there, that will be included in the ca course catalog um, that will be uploaded for next year, all right? Um, so, but you can use this as a guide. Do I have ninth grade parents in here? Welcome. Tenth grade? All right. Eleventh grade? Welcome. And twelfth grade? Okay. Um, any parents of students who are, have already graduated? Okay, wonderful. I think I'm going to close this door a little bit. Excuse me. Is that you? Okay. We don't want to compete with the other session. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, usually we'll have about five minutes at the end for some question and answers. Um, of course, if you need me to clarify something, please feel free. Um, but we're going to count down to graduation for college, okay? All right. So here I found this beautiful picture of this beautiful pathway. And let's hope that your student's journey is as serene and beautiful as this and you accompanying your student through high school. Um, we, we know that's not always the case. That's our hope. We know that, we, first of all, we need to overcome the fact that the teenage brain is not prone to planning. That frontal lobe is not developed until the early 20s. Well, we really need them to plan now. So it's kind of working against us. So we need to overcome that fact and really help them. They're, um, especially for parents of rising ninth grade students or current ninth grade students, you know, they've just arrived in high school. They're not thinking about exiting high school, right? They're just excited in the fact that they've achieved, they've gone past middle school, they've got more freedoms, they've got a lot, their world has opened up, all right? Um, so we really need to help break it down for them. And so the forms that I've given you, the, you have I talked about the graduation requirements. The second form um, is double-sided. 9th, 10th, and 11 give you action items for what they should be doing each year. And then this flip side shows you how much there is to do in senior year. So feel free to take notes on this paper. Um, but we need to help them as their support team to break down the process, OK? All right, so I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm a mom too, so I'm sure many of you, when you were trying to impart your wisdom into your children, you've already traveled this journey. You're trying to tell them, you know, what they should be doing and what they should be looking out for. You get the eye rolls and you get the sighs and the, okay, mom, you know. So uh, often you get resistance from your children, you know. Uh, sometimes you need someone like the school counselor to come in and say, who doesn't have that close relationship where they can kind of blow you off. Um, to really help you with that. So your school counselor is your child's expert guide and your support system throughout this process. All right? Um, often, you know, the transition from high school to post-secondary is the biggest transition they're going to face. For those of you with younger students, you know, they've they're about to transition to high school or have just transitioned. Um, so they're not really thinking about the next phase. Um, but think about it, students have always had that next grade to go to. And as a senior, you know, you, the whole world is open to them. It can be pretty overwhelming. So this is the biggest transition they're going to face. So we need to really realize that. And so often we have resistance. So usually we see resistance occur when they're feeling overwhelmed. They just don't know where to start. So each year we, go, we deliver classroom guidance lessons. We meet with them individually. And we try to break it down about what they should be doing. All right? And we're going to break it down year by year for you here. Um, sometimes you really need to take the cues that your children are giving you that they're not really ready to face these decisions. So maybe you have a junior, senior student who is just really resisting 
going on college visits, uh, taking career person, personality tests or career interest inventories, declaring a major, looking at colleges, maybe they're telling you emotionally, I'm not ready for that yet. Maybe I need to start at NOVA and stay closer to home and give a little more time and do my general requir requirements there. So we need to really listen to what, what they're saying to us. All right, so um, we want you to sit down with your student, use the guide that we've given you and the information you're going to get from this session to help plan and accomplish tasks. Um, I think it's important for each year for you to set goals, you help your child set goals to accomplish every year so that they're not coming to see us senior year completely overwhelmed. Um, just as you have come today, you know, continue to attend parent nights. We have rising ninth grade parent nights at Battlefield. There's senior parent nights. There's financial aid nights. So um, lots of information out there. Um, this presentation will be posted. Um, I know that we're building an on-demand library at Prince William County Student Services page. Um, at Battlefield, we upload all our presentations on the Counseling Center page. So if you want to go back and review it, or if you happen to miss that, you can access that. Um, of course, your school counselor, I can't say enough, is your expert guide, your child's expert guide. Okay, and if you have any questions, feel free to email us or call us. We will absolutely help you. Okay, so we're going to count down starting from ninth grade. So we've got four years to go. The first thing really is to understand the graduation requirements. And so the form I gave you is really for current ninth through twelfth graders. You can access your graduation requirements on the Prince William County's school course catalog. Um, it's linked on student services, it's linked on your high school's webpage, all right? Uh, we go over individually with the students every year at course selection. Um, we help them stay on track for graduation. And if at any time you're confused or have questions, feel free to email your child's counselor or give them a call. Basically, if your child does not have an IEP, some IEPs um, students will get a special diploma, but generally in Virginia it's going to be um, an advanced diploma or a standard diploma, two different diploma types. The advanced diploma is a 26 credit diploma. Um, it keeps children on track for what college, colleges are looking for. So it helps them stay um, um, competitive for college admissions. It's going to require at least three years of a foreign language. Highly selective schools will want to see an additional fourth year possibly. All right, um, you're going to have an extra year of math, so you have to get to at least Algebra 2 for the advanced diploma, an extra science, um, and extra social studies, and everyone has to have four years of English. A standard diploma leaves a lot of room for flexibility, possibly for someone, I have students who know they want to go into cosmetology, and they're going to apply, get into the specialty program at Stonewall, and they're only here every other day. So they can't fit the 26 credits into their schedule, their junior and senior year. So they're going to do the standard diploma, possibly. It's going to be more flexible. Maybe a student has family commitments and needs to work. Um, or a student who really is kind of done with high school, and I want to go to NOVA and take advantage of dual enrollment, and I don't really want to achieve the 26 credits. It's not working for me. So the 22 credit diploma, standard diploma, gives a lot more flexibility. You still need three years of a math, three years of science, and three years of social studies, and specific classes um, in those areas. And your, um, your child's counselor will help them keep on track for that. And instead of foreign language, it's a sequential elective, okay, something in sequence, which could be a foreign language. All right. So we really want children to start, students to start strong in ninth grade, so start taking challenging classes. The number one thing colleges are looking for is rigorous classes, okay? Um, we don't want them to overwhelm themselves, all right? Sometimes they sit down with an eighth grader and they've listed all pre-AP classes. And I say, well, I'm really concerned about your ability to balance life and extracurriculars and sleep that you desperately need with taking all these classes. So really focus on classes that they have an interest in, that they excel in, that they're, uh, they have a strong ability and a strong desire to excel in. All right, so we really need to fo we really focus on balance. Um, some, some of you may see little notes from me or your counselor for um, consider balance on the top of the paper, and that means we think potentially um, your child may be a little overextended. But that's a conversation for you to have with the teacher and the student and the counselor, okay? So really take challenging courses. Maybe you start, want to start with one pre-AP class and build from there. Colleges want to see an upward trend. All right, students should get involved in school and community activities. We have over 90 clubs and activities at Battlefield High School, all posted on the Battlefield's website. So there, we have a ping pong club, we have an anime club, we have service clubs like DECA and Key Club. 
Um, for students with a qualifying GPA, you can get into National Honor Society in 10th grade. Um, so lots of ways to get involved and serve the community and serve, serve their school. All right. Um, colleges are specifically, they favor leadership and service. So that's something that your children can focus on. Um, I always say, you know, try to look for an activities that are unique and have high impact. All right, so don't try to belong to too many clubs. Maybe focus on a couple um, service organizations or clubs and really put your energy there. All right. Okay, so we're still in ninth grade. Um, one of the wonderful, wonderful resources that Prince William County pays for every student is family connection. Um, the, those of you who have ninth grade students, we just introduced your students this fall into Family Connection, gave them an overview, um, showed them all the features. This is something they can access from home. It's linked for, um, under the student section of um, Battlefield's website. I'm sure it's linked under the student section on your high school's website. Um, it's the online college research and career exploration tool. So it's going to give them, it's all encompassing. So they can take um, self-exploration tools, take assessments to figure out, what do I want to do with my life? What, what would, I be, would be a good match for me? All right, so they can take a personality type assessment where it's going to match different um, um, careers and college majors based on their personality. They can take a learning styles inventory. What kind of learner am I? Um, they can take a strengths explorer where it comes up the top three attributes. They call it themes that um, the, their strongest, like a competitor or compassionate, things like that, and then different career matches that are the best fit for those attributes. Um, and then it goes and you can check out colleges with those majors that have that. So it's really full circle. Um, once they've come up with some potential career interest and some potential majors, then they can use a super match college search tool. I use this with my students all the time. Um, they can filter by Virginia schools and search for, uh, maybe they've always wanted to go to Virginia Tech, but it doesn't have the major that they want, you know? So they can start searching for that. Um, as I said, ninth graders have just entered high school and are not really ready to be thinking about exiting, but we need to help them plan and break, break it down. Um, and they can do this from home. You know, some of these inventories are 50, 70 questions, so they can do it in less than an hour. And then I ask my students to email me that you've done it, I'll pull you in and talk about it. Or um, bring it up on the iPad and we can, we, I can help you research colleges and things like that. Um, there's a resume feature. There's a template in Family Connection. So all those activities and service hours, they can track them by starting to build a resume. Um, so that when they get to senior year, they don't have to really think about what it is I was doing. It's all listed for them, okay? There's a feature where they can set goals if you want to help them set goals and journal their activities. So lots of wonderful things in Family Connection. So if you want to go home and impress your student, um, if you have ninth, ninth graders and above, um, you can say, um, so tell me about this family connection the counselor was talking about. So um, they can even log in and show you. It's really easy. All right, and if you have questions about the program, feel free to contact your, your school counselor. Those, um, I have a lot of eighth grade parents in here. Your children will be introduced next fall. Okay, so now we've moved into 10th grade. We've got three years to go. We are maintaining good grades and challenging courses. Remember that upward trend, so maybe start off with one pre-AP class and maybe you want to add another, look for something else that is um, a strength or something you want to challenge yourself. Uh, maybe you got a rocky start to high school and you can really recover in 10th grade. So they're looking for that upward trend. Continue to look for leadership opportunities, all right? Um, continue volunteering or start volunteering. Maybe ninth grade was just you getting transitioned to high school. That happens too. So go ahead and maybe start some opportunities. Um, one of the features that I really like about Family Connection, under the Colleges tab, there's enrichment opportunities. So these are summer programs or internships or specific experiences that um, your, your students can apply for in 9th through 12th grades. All right, most of the scholarships posted on Family Connection are for seniors only. So enrichment opportunities, um, there's usually not a lot that come through, um, but every once in a while your child can find a good match. All right, so they're going to want to update their resume on Family Connection, keep that current, right? Um, and share activities with a school counselor. I can't tell you how much it makes me happy for my ninth and 10th graders to come check in and say, hey, Ms. Nguyen, I just want to let you know I'm, I've got this volunteer act activity this summer I'm really excited about. 
Um, or maybe email me what you're doing. You know, they don't really think to visit their counselor a lot. I meet with all my ninth graders to see how they're transitioning. Um, but I love when they come in on their own. I've been doing this for a lot of years. I've been at Battlefield for five years. I've probably had maybe 4,000 or more, 4,500 students I've been assigned to over the years. And I can count on one or two hands the, the number of ninth graders that have come in on their own to say, I want to introduce myself to you. I want to get to know you. I know that um, you should hear about what I'm doing. I love that. So encourage your student to see their counselor. Their counselor is their support system at school. It's not too early in 10th grade to begin a list of possible schools. There's a feature on Family Connection called Colleges I'm Thinking About. So after they've kind of researched some majors and picked up some schools, maybe a list of 10 or more schools, they can add it to this feature. Um, it allows them to view deadlines, um, to view scattergrams, and they can even be invited to in-school college visits when the college reps come to the high school um, to talk to students. So the scattergrams I talked about, these are graphs in Family Connection per high school that reflect the credentials of the students that have applied to different schools. So if you are a parent um, of a Hilton student and you pull up Virginia Tech, it'll have, going a few years back, um, the GPAs and the SAT scores of students who have been accepted, denied, or waitlisted to that school. So if your student, let's say your student had a rocky start to ninth grade, and your student tells a counselor, well, I really want to go to Virginia Tech. Um, you know, the counselor or you sitting down with your student can pull up the scattergram, click on the graph, and say, well, here's the average of students who are getting in. Where are you on that? And let them connect the dots and see, well, I have a lot of improvements to do. Or I'm doing pretty well. I need to maintain, OK? So that's a wonderful feature. Um, they need to understand college entrance requirements for their intended schools. Uh, for example, math and science requirements are not the same everywhere. Um, you know, Prince William County Schools, in the state of Virginia, we, we list earth science as one of the four lab sciences approved for the advanced diploma. JMU does not consider earth science a lab science. So they would not consider that um, entrance material. They consider biochemistry and physics. So we don't want students to get caught off guard because they, they have enough to get out of high school but not quite what their intended school is looking for. So if you go to the college websites, you can look for high school requirements. Um, some, some websites, like everywhere, are easier to use than others. Sometimes you'll see it under the counselor page. Um, some schools may say, we need three years of math. Um, some will say, it must be three years of math through Algebra 2. Some will say, we want to see math above Algebra 2. The advanced diploma, you can take four years of math. You have to have Algebra 2. So some students don't necessarily go above Algebra 2. So you want to make sure that you have what it takes to get into that school. All right? So that's something they really could be looking at at 10th grade. Also for the intended major, that's really important too. You want to get to the right math level. For example, engineering. Some schools require a certain level of calculus. Okay. So we're still in 10th grade. Um, students took the PSAT this October. Right? Um, if you have ninth graders, they will be taking it next October. They took the redesigned PSAT. I'm sure many of you have heard that the SAT has been redesigned. So starting this March um, it is going to the redesigned um, SAT where the writing is optional. So it's going back to the 1600 score. So for 10 years it was 2400 and writing was um, required. Um, they've also changed the, the con many content areas. So it's going to feel like it matches more matches the student's high school curriculum. Um, it really, in my opinion, aligns more with how ACT has always done their test. One of the things I really think College Board does a great job with is a personalized SAT study plan. It's one of the best benefits for PSAT. I also see this is one of the gaps that students don't use enough. So they get their PSAT results for those of you with 10th or 11th graders and those students who provided an email address, they would have had their scores emailed to them this past week from College Board. We as counselors have not received the paper reports from College Board yet. They're not due until the end of January to come to us. So we will deliver them to students. Um, what we really want for them, and for 10th graders, you're not going to focus on your score. Do not have your children focus on their score, all right? We see a lot of students or parents say, I'm a little surprised that the score is not what I would have expected. They haven't had the learning to have their score higher, all right? So they're focusing on the skill set. So they're going to get their PSAT results back as 10th graders, and they're going to focus on the specific SAT study plan that's partnered with Khan Academy. 
Um, excuse me, but I inverted the letters. It's K-H-A-N. Raise your hand if you're familiar with Khan Academy. Wonderful. It's a great resource for online um, tutorials for different subject areas. So they are, um, at College Board and Khan Academy are partnering with each other to um, have a student-specific SAT study plan. So what your child can do is look at their strengths when they get their score report, look at the subjects, the, the sections where they did well and try to increase the level of difficulty to further master those areas. And then look at the sections where they didn't do well and improve on those areas. And I would have your child work all of this semester and a little bit over the summer and prepare for the, if they're current 10th graders, the PSAT in the fall as a junior and see how much they've grown when they get their results back. If you're the parent of a, a junior, um, they're going to really prepare for the SAT this spring, right? Okay. I really think that kids in general do not take use of this free resource. Um, in the past, College Board has really done a good job of, um, calling, of, of helping with the college and career planning with their big future piece. Um, so I anticipate, we don't have access to score reports yet, but I anticipate they're, they're going to do something similar where they help the children can take a personality test and um, research different colleges and majors and, and things that all the things I described with family connection, all those features. Okay, um, so as I mentioned, SAT is changing for um, only this year. seniors are taking the old SAT. All um, juniors and below will have the redesigned SAT. It rolls out in March of 2016. It's returning to the max score of 1600. Um, the writing section will be optional. And here's something though, if you, remember I talked about your intended schools, you need to know what they require. If your intended school is still requiring the writing piece, um, you need to know that ahead of time. You can't go back and just take the writing section of the SAT. So you'd have to take the whole SAT over again, okay? Um, one of the things I really love they've improved on is they have eliminated the quarter point um, penalty for incorrect responses. So now students will only earn points for correct answers. So they've taken away that penalty, something ACT has always done. Um, if you want to look for more specific details about the changes to the redesigned SAT. We don't have time to go into it today. I understand that there's a lot of big changes. Um, look at the Prince William County Student Services page under College and Career Planning, and you and your child can have a better understanding. They have a link there. You can also go on College Board's website. Um, the other test is the ACT, the other college entrance test. Um, I recommend that children take both. I don't know how different they're going to be now that the SAT has been redesigned. It's, I think it's more aligned with how ACT has already delivered, the, always delivered their test. Um, but they can take the practice ACT called PLAN. They can go on ACT.org and take practice questions. Um, in the past, some students have fared much better on the ACT than the SAT or vice versa. Um, previously, schools have taken whatever the highest section is from any test. So it's called super scoring. So. All right, colleges will accept both tests, by the way. All right, so another thing to keep in mind, there's a deadline coming up, 10th grade leading into 11th and 12th grade, if a student is interested in applying to a specialty program here in Prince William County, whether it's biotechnology, auto technology, building trades, cosmetology, um, that's a two-year program for junior and senior year. Those deadlines range from, range from February 1 to mid-March. So you can look under Prince William County's webpage for specialty programs and you will see what the deadlines, there's an application, some require teacher recommendations, so those are coming up, okay? All right, uh, Governor's School at Innovation Park is a junior-senior program. So for those of you who are interested in that, maybe you have younger students in eighth grade or ninth grade, um, you can view the website on Governor's School and see what the required classes are. Um, that application is due the first week of February, and that's fairly lengthy. You have to file an intent to apply and then get the application. You need several letters of recommendation and essays and, um, and things like that. One of the things I really love about College Board when they get the results from PSAT is there's a report called AP Potential. And so at Battlefield, we mail letters home to parents and students and say, based on your PSAT results, College Board is recommending that you have potential in these AP classes. And then they will list those AP classes. Um, does it mean that you're going to take all the 19 classes offered at Battlefield High School or whatever high school your child goes to? 
Absolutely not. Your, your child is going to focus on um, interest and skill level. All right. So we want them to stretch themselves but not overwhelm themselves. Moving into junior and senior year is typically when they can take the AP classes. At Battlefield, there's only two AP classes students can take in 10th grade. So in 9th grade, it's all pre-AP at Battlefield. OK, so that, again, should be online in the College Board account for your student when they get their access code to see the AP potential, and we mail letters home. I actually use this report in course selection when I meet with students individually. So if I have a student that has uh, recommendations for AP classes but isn't choosing AP classes, I'm going to explore that with them and challenge them and say, so, you know, wh find out where the resistance is, all right? Okay. And we recommend that you talk to the teachers. We rely heavily on teacher recommendations for course selection. And keep in mind, course selection is coming up. It starts um, beginning of February, mid-February, depending on, on your school. Um, so really start thinking about what your children will be taking next year. Feel free to talk to your counselor and your children's current teachers about the best classes. All right, so now we've made it to junior year. We just have two years to go, right? 11th grade. So one of the key phrases you're going to hear a lot from college representatives um, is the context of the curriculum. So they're going to look at your child's transcript and the courses that your child has taken in the context of the school's curriculum. For example, at Battlefield, uh, there are many, many AP classes. We're going to send the school profile that lists the 19 AP classes and the 17 advanced or honors classes. And the school has a profile, and they're going to look at the transcript and see how many classes did your child take. Remember, I said that the number one uh, criteria colleges are looking for is course rigor. So they want to see that they're challenging themselves. All right? So they're going to look in the context of their curriculum and see what they're choosing. Aside from that, balance is key. We do not want students overburdening themselves. We do not want students stressed out and not able to sleep or function. We don't want that. So we really encourage you to talk to your children's teachers, really think about um, their work habits and their history as a, as a student. You know, We want them to stretch themselves again and not overwhelm themselves. All right? So they're going to maintain good grades in those rigorous classes. Um, have extracurricular activities, and continue to research programs through enrichment, the enrichment programs on family connection. By the end of 11th grade, we want them to have come up with a list of five to seven schools that they are seriously considering, all right? And they want to visit the colleges in junior year. We offer excused absences for students to go visit college. Now, we don't want you missing too much instructional time, so it's really smart to take advantage of spring break or those teacher work days and go visit colleges. Um, you want to see the college in action, all right? So um, you want to see, you know, in, in full swing. You want to visit a class. You want to meet with um, the dean or a professor of your intended school. Um, you know, talk about campus safety. Look at the environment. Um, it needs to feel like home. So if your child has always thought that they want to go to VCU for the art program and then go visit and decide, well, I don't know that I could really swing living in this urban setting, you know, they, it needs to feel right to them. So they need to visit those schools. All right. In the fall of junior year, there are many college fairs that they can visit. Um, and we have in-school college visits in the fall because all the reps that are traveling to the college fairs are visiting the high schools too. So we want to make sure that your juniors know that they can go to that. A lot, it's mo most popular for seniors, but juniors, even some sophomores, are welcome to go. All right. Um, in the spring, T.C. Williams has a really good um, historically black college and colleges and university fair. Um, a couple years ago, I took a group of students, and they have on-site admissions. So look up, look up for that. All right. Um, Student athletes who are interested in playing uh, sports in college need to register for el their eligibility on the NCAA Clearinghouse. All right. Um, students interested in service academy appointments, so the military service academies, they really need to start that planning junior year. There's a lot to do, many steps for that. Um, I really prefer Senator Warner's checklist on his website for that. Um, but there's limited nominations. That, um, that go out, so they need to get in early. They have to enlist their teachers in their counselor, have to write letters of recommendations. Um, they have to write some essays and have interviews. So starting that August of senior year 
they're going to be stressed. It's a little behind. Okay, so really the spring is the best time. And they need to let their counselor that, know that they're doing that. And if you have a ninth grader, a rising ninth grader, who is talking about possibly a military academy appointment, you know, make sure that they tell their counselor. I flag my students um, so I can be aware of, of their interests, their different interests. All right? Um, think about teacher recommendations for applications. Junior year, it's not too early to do that. I know some teachers that require uh, the recommendation request to come in before June of junior year. They won't write letters in senior year. They write their letters over the summer and that's it. Um, some teachers will write a max number of letters. Maybe they're going to write 20 letters. Um, so we have, I have an interview sheet that I require my seniors to write. I would love for them to do it over the summer and email it to me right away senior year. So these are things that they can do ahead of time. These are things absolutely they can do. Um, some schools require a counselor letter. Some schools require a teacher letter. Some schools require two. Some are optional. Some, like Virginia Tech and JMU, the reps will tell you they don't really want to read a letter. Only if um, your student has overcome a challenge or there's something that really needs to be explained away. Um, okay, something else to really think about in junior year. If students are interested in NOVA dual enrollment, um, they need to take the placement test in the spring and meet with their counselor. So dual enrollment, students can go in senior year and go to NOVA and get started on college. They can take community college classes while in high school and while finishing up their high school requirements. Um, at Battlefield, and I'm not sure how many other high schools in, in Prince William County, but at Battlefield, um, a couple years ago, we started dual enrollment classes in school. So we have Battlefield teachers teaching dual enrollment English and dual enrollment government. And they're free for those who qualify, all right? Um, so that's an option, but you have to pass a placement test, so for reading and writing, all right? And we offer it because we're, we are an IT school with IT dual enrolled classes, we offer placement testing in school in the spring of junior year. But you can go to NOVA's uh, testing offices and do the placement testing there, all right? In order to be a NOVA dual enrolled stu student, you have to be a NOVA student. So you have to be at least 16, you have to apply. So there is a step-by-step -step process. Right? And that should be started in junior year. They're going to want to take the SAT or ACT in the spring, usually in May or June. So they're going to want to be uh, preparing for that with their PSAT results. All right? Um, during the summer, they're going to want to review their college applications. All right? So they're going to want to see how many essays do I need to write. Co common application doesn't usually roll out their new application until August. Um, but they want to look at pre start preparing their essays. Uh, how many essays do I need to write? Um, what, is my, what is my plan going to be? Am I going to have files for different colleges? Am I going to have an Excel spreadsheet? I have students come in and pop out their laptop and show me their Excel spreadsheet and this is what I need. So whatever organization tool works for your child, um, they wouldn't want to start planning that. Senior year is incredibly busy. Um, so we want them to plan as much as they can junior year in the summer of junior year. Something else to really consider is think about application deadlines um, before senior year starts. Because, for example, there's some North Carolina schools that the early deadlines are October 10th or October 15th. So really quickly after senior year starts. Um, and then they need to think about, would I be applying early decision? You know, that's, I've made a decision, I'm going there if I get in. That's a binding agreement. You have in contract with that school to attend. But that limits you. You know, if you know that you have the credentials to get into that school and that's your number one school, you've dreamed of it since fourth grade and you want to go, and you're committed, that might be a good option for you. Um, but then it eliminates other options if other schools give you more money, you know, so you're really limited financially to that one school. It's also more competitive at some schools. Like UVA, it's much more comp competitive to apply early. So you could have chances of being declined. So it's either yes, no, or maybe for early, right? And if you're deferred to regular, then you're just in with the regular pool. Um, some schools like J JMU and Virginia Tech will tell you that early they're going to defer 90%. They're going to take the top 10%, eliminate the bottom 10%, and defer the rest. So it's, it's really not more competitive. Um, some students just like to know by winter break if they're in or not, OK? They don't want to wait until March or April. Um, generally, the most common early deadline is November 1. So you're going to need to have your recommendation requests and your applications and everything in plenty of time. 
we require 10 days to process applications. So we don't want them missing important deadlines. So that's something that they can be planning before senior year starts, okay? Um, so I, every year I have seniors come in and they just really, really underestimated how busy senior year starts. And keep in mind, they're finally at the pinnacle. They finally, after 13 years, including kindergarten, have got to senior year. So they're excited. Uh, they want to hang out with their friends and you know, go to the homecoming game and do all these social things that they should be doing. So the, the more they can take off their plate ahead of time, the better. Um, every year I also have seniors sitting in my chair, in, sitting in my office when we have our senior conferences, who are saying, um, I've, I've not done what you've been telling me to do. <laughs> I'm in a panic, what do I do? You know, so we'll meet your, your student where they are, but if you can help them plan, that's great. All right, so now I've just shared a lot of information with you, right? So now we're gonna focus on something that fills us up and gives us joy. We're gonna find our happy place, right? This is one of my favorite desktop backgrounds. I have it on in the fall. Because <laughs> remember, your children's busy season in senior years, my busy seasons too. So I always tell students, don't panic, okay? Refocus, reflect, refresh, all right? We're gonna meet you where you are. We're gonna help you get where you need to go. Right? Maybe you haven't done what you needed to do, um, but we're going to get you where, where it's best for you to be. All right, so find your happy place. And then we're going to get to senior year. This um, takes up the whole back side of your planning paper, right? It breaks it down month by, month by month, and I love that. I think especially for teenage, I mean, for all of us, breaking things down is, helps, but especially for teenagers. The more you can break it down and do little by little, the, the less stress they're going to be. All right, so one of the big first decisions they need to make is they need to see, you know, do I, um, do I need to take the SAT or ACT again? And if so, am I going to apply early? You know, it takes about three weeks for the scores to be sent. So if I have an October 15th, like NC State is October 15th, and I take the October 4th SAT or whatever, wherever it lands, you know, the scores are going to come a little bit later. Um, they're considered supporting documents, so it might be okay, but they really have to sort of plan things out. All right, if I apply regular decision, then I have time to take the October, November, even December um, standardized tests. So that's one of the first decisions that they're gonna, they're gonna decide. Maybe they did so well in the spring, they decide I don't I wanna take it again. That happens too. They're gonna review their intended college applications, make sure nothing has changed since they looked at it over the summer, all right? They're going to write their essays. A lot of times uh, students really stress over this. Have them share it with a, an English teacher. I read essays. You know, you read your children's essays. Have several sets of eyes. Proofread it. You don't want typos. You want to make sure that it sounds like them. All right? Um, college, at, college reps will say re, they want to read a letter that is genuine. They want to be able to envision that person at their campus. All right? So make sure that essay is true to them. And they want to secure those recommendations. You, you don't want to wait. And the last thing you want to, they want to do is not give the recommender enough time to write a quality letter, OK? All right, so um, we talked about deadlines. We talked about early. Um, and again, most counseling centers are going to have a senior parent night. So if you're a rising ninth grade parent, as many of you, of you are, it's helpful to see the whole process. Um, but you, we're going to go over this every single year. Um, with, with seniors, okay, um, and uh, we're going to break it down for your student every year too. So we just want you to have a little picture of what it looks like. So earlier priority, we want you to be familiar with the terminology. Um, even if your child is applying regular decision, the priority deadlines are those scholarship deadlines. So um, every student should fill out the FAFSA and see if they qualify for some funding. Why not get the money if you qualify? Um, and make sure you don't miss a priority deadline. Sometimes it's December 1, but the application is not due till January 15th, but you have to meet the priority deadline. Some schools have separate scholarship applications, so really you have to look and see. Seniors are going to attend an individualized conference with their counselor, so we're gonna, we meet with every single senior in the first six weeks of school. Talk, we revisit their, um, their post-secondary plans, their academic goals. Make sure they have a transcript so they know what their cumulative GPA are, is and rank and make sure that they know exactly what they need to graduate. So the, we go over a checklist. We mail a copy home. At Battlefield, we mail a copy home to moms and dads. Um, 
understand family connection. If your child has not really used family connection through high school, as a senior, they cannot go through the transfer process without family connection. And it's a, a student-led process. So we teach the students how to do it. And so I, we'll have parents say, I don't know what the, the process is. It's because we've taught the children. So you're there to support them through the process. And sometimes I'll have third and fourth meetings with students because they really just need a lot of extra support, and that's fine. Like I said, we're going to meet your child where they are and help them. So it's a one-on-one -on -one conference, um, and then we make sure that they are, know their deadlines and are meeting their deadlines. Um, they're going to apply for scholarships. Most scholarships listed in Family Connection are for seniors. There are some um, for you know, ninth through 11th graders. But even if they just take one to two hours a week and apply for scholarships, many students don't because maybe they don't want to write an extra essay. See if they can tweak one of their college essays and just recycle it for different scholarships. There's a scholarship match feature in Family Connection that will match your child's credentials. There are scholarships for gender. There are scholarships for intended majors. There are um, ethnicity-based scholarships. So lots of different scholarships posted. And some are division-wide. Some are just for that region. Some might be local. So, um, you know, and make sure your child talks to the counselor and says, I really am interested in searching for scholarships. And your co counselor can help keep an eye on that, on that for them. Um, parents, make sure you attend senior parent night and a financial aid night um, in senior year. There's a lot of great information. Um, I know the FAFSA has changed um, to make it much more, e much more ease of use in the last couple of years. All right, so make sure you're up on the changes. Um, after January 1 of your child's senior year, so the year that your child will enter college, is when you're going to complete the FAFSA. All right? There's a really great link that we just are posting on our website, 11, 11 common mistakes that people make completing the FAFSA. So make sure that you're looking at the student services page on Prince William County Schools and your child's counseling page for all updated information if you have any questions. And then if you really have a need or your student has a need in a certain area, make sure you're, they're communicating that with the counselor so the counselor can be their guide. Okay? Um, a lot of, there's a big myth out there that senior year doesn't really count. You know, it's just my cumulative GPA is 9th through 11th grade. So I can take it easy. I can have, embrace senioritis and have an easy senior year. And that's not the case. It is true that the initial transcript that's sent, the cumulative GPA is 9th through 11th grade and the class rank. Um, but remember that colleges will, let you have your list of senior year courses on the transcript, so they're going to see if you're still challenging yourself. Um, and many AP classes, students can take in senior year and they can boost their GPA. Um, we do recalculate GPA and rank mid-year and send the mid-year transcripts to the colleges. So it can really help a senior or really hurt a senior. So it's a total myth that senior year doesn't count. They don't get to take a break for a while, right? OK. All right, so we talked about uh, students attending NOVA. I have students who know right away, I'm going to go to NOVA. It's the best financial um, th route for my family. Or um, I, I'm not ready to leave. I want to stay close to home. Or I have family responsibilities. There's a variety of reasons why students choose to go to NOVA. And so they know that they're going to go, and they can, the NOVA um, uh, updates their application and puts it out in January. So they'll apply to NOVA, complete the FAFSA, take their um, placement test, um, take their, their orientation tour, and then go ahead and, um, and go. We have a NOVA rep who comes to the school to meet with our seniors, usually in February or March. Sometimes students don't get the financial letters that they want from their schools, and so they've decided, I'm going to start at NOVA. I'm going to pay $10,000 for two years of college instead of $40,000 for two years of college, which is the average, $20,000 a year for the Virginia State schools. Um, I had a student a couple years ago who got into Virginia Tech for computer science with a 4.2 GPA. That was his intended major. And he said, I just didn't get the money I was hoping. So I'm going to go to NOVA and use guaranteed admissions and transfer. And I'm going to you know, not be in, in as much debt. So there's a variety of reasons why students start at NOVA. It's a wonderful place to start. But make sure if that's the best place for your student, that they are doing the guaranteed admissions. They're going to look on NOVA's website. NOVA has a wonderful step-by-step -step checklist for how first-year students um, need to apply and enter NOVA and when they need to um, register for classes. Um, they also have a guaranteed admissions page. So they need to make sure when your children are at NOVA getting an Associate of Arts or Associate of Science, which are the transferable degrees, 
that they um, are meeting for their intended college, their intended university, that they're meeting the GPA and course requirements. Okay? All right. And we have um, a high school liaison for NOVA. I think she's presenting here today. I saw her checking in. So she comes and presents at our senior night. So there's a lot of great information for you. Um, also in senior year, the students are going to be studying, Battlefield's an AP school, I know we have IB in Cambridge, you're going to be studying for the spring tests, right? So you're taking these advanced classes, these college level classes, and now you want to try and get college credit for them, all right? So you want to do, they want to do as well as they can. Um, you have to be sure, you have to note that the intended school's policy is what you need to be looking for. So you, it's going to be listed on their website. Um, some schools, even though, for example, AP 3 is a passing score, some schools want to see a four or five, specifically on, you know, like calculus and those tests. They're looking for a five. So, um, and sometimes they will only take the course as an elective credit. For example, a couple years ago, I had a student who got a five on the AP environmental science exam. She went to tech. She was super excited. She was shocked when she still had to take freshman biology because tech said, well, we'll give you elective credit for it, but you're still, you're still going to take the freshman bio class. She was a little disappointed. So it's up to the receiving school, okay? But it's great when you can eliminate those credits you need to pay for, right? So the last thing they're going to do through Family Connections, they're going to actually select where they're going. And, you know, the financial award letters have come out, or um, they've decided by May 1st they've made, that you've, you've made the deposit for them for their school. And they're going to select their college and university on Family Connection. We're going to automatically send their transcript. We automatically send the mid-year transcripts. So they don't have to request it again and they just get ready and, and graduate, right? So here we have graduation. So we're going to think happy thoughts because we've made it, right? Okay. So does anyone have any questions? I know that was a lot of information. Yes. recommend that students, the question is, it said SAT or ACT, maybe I should have said and or ACT. You know, with this redesigned SAT, we don't really know how closely it's going to be to the ACT. In years past, SAT was very different from ACT, so I always recommended that my students um, take both practice tests or even take both tests and see where they do better. College, colleges will super score, so if you have the highest math on SAT and the highest reading on ACT, Typically, the colleges will super score and take the highest from each section. Um, so one, some, st some students perform much better on one test over the other. Now with the redesigned um, SAT, it's going to feel more like their high school curriculum. So it's going to be a very different test. So I don't know, you know how it's going to compare to the ACT. I think it's a lot more similar. But I think they could try both. Yeah. Yes. So Family Connection, every high school is going to be linked for the students. As for example, at Battlefield, um, it's under the student's link on the home page is Family Connection. And so it's the, it's the same um, path, username and password as Portal or Fusion, so your student will know how to get in. And you can sit with your student and, and go through some personality assessments. And is that also true for the College Board accounts? I haven't heard of that either. The College Board is its own entity. So the College Board owns SAT and owns AP, and so they will have um, their own um, access code. So for those students who were 10th and 11th grade and took the PSAT this year and provided an email address, they've had the access code emailed to them with their scores. Otherwise, we will be giving back paper reports, and we're supposed to get them the end of January, so, which is much, much later than we've ever gotten them. Yes. So I'm sorry, they have to create their own College Board account. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You have to be 16. So we, um, you could potentially do it junior year also. So um, at Battlefield, we have many IT classes that are dually enrolled. So a lot of IT classes that are dually enrolled are taken in junior year. So talk with your child's counselor about that. Yeah. Mostly it's done in senior year because you need so many classes in junior year that are required for graduation. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. Is that 
Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, you have to see the receiving school, what they will accept. So students who excel in the dual enrollment program and get their college credit, in senior year, they're going to be sending, requesting transcripts from NOVA and sending their high school transcript to the college. It's up to the receiving school to say if they're going to take the credit. So you, you do have a little risk. Schools like George Mason that have a really good um, partnership with NOVA are probably going to take their, you know, their credits. So. And students who go to the governor's school, you know, all those classes are Mason credits. So they would be sending their Mason transcripts. I know this is a lot of information, but it's helpful to have the overview, right, to kind of see where you're going. Okay. Yes. So NOVA, if you look on the Guaranteed Admissions website at NOVA, it lists all the schools, and there's many, many, many schools, um, and the GPA and the courses that you need to take to get in. It's really critical. NOVA has a lot of different programs. NOVA's great for students. Maybe, maybe you know that you want to, you know, I have students who want to work in the family business and want to, you know, have their trade at NOVA. Um, and NOVA has wonderful cert cert certification programs. Um, they also have other, other credited programs that are not the transferable degree. So you have to make sure you're in the right program. All right? It's the Associate of Arts or Associate of Science. Yes, ma'am. It has to be a two-year degree. So if you're going to transfer after one year at NOVA, you're going to be sending your high school transcript too. Yeah. So you, you need to, you're not going to send your high school transcript after you have your associate's degree because that degree trumps the previous degree, right? So it trumps your high school diploma, right? And keep in mind that the high school, I mean, the GPA required for these schools out of NOVA is lower than out of high school. The reason for that is you're already proving that you're capable of college-level work. Any other questions? Yes, sir. That's a great question. The question is, you know, what is the difference between the SAT and the subject test? So there's SAT 1 and SAT 2. And so the subject tests are one hour tests that your, typically, your student's typically going to take at the end of junior year after they've completed that course in a class that they excel in, math, US history, something like that. It's going to be typically related to the major. Um, some schools require a subject test. Um, some schools consider it optional. Some schools don't, don't care. So you need to look at the intended school to see. Um, it, you know, when things say optional, I tell my students, just go ahead and give, give above and beyond and, and do it. Um, there are two different math subject tests. Um, the math two is a higher level subject test, so make sure you are taking the correct math test also. So, that's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. Any other questions? And if you have a very specific question connected to your child, feel free. I'm already talking to parents of um, rising ninth grade students. Um, so I'm happy to talk to my eighth grade parents. If you have questions, I get that's a, such a huge transition. I know we have a lot of eighth grade parents here. Feel free to reach out to your counselor. Um, we are getting ready at Battlefield to host a rising ninth grade parent information night to cover graduation requirements and really go in depth. Um, but if you leave here and you have any questions, I know our presentation is going to be posted. This video is going to be on demand. Um, feel free to contact your child's counselor. We're here to help in any way. Thank you. So the transcript that's sent out to colleges is just your, the cumulative GPA. So 9th, 10th, and 11th grade final year GPAs combined and averaged. Um, we don't send out quarter grades. We send out mid-year grades for seniors. So it would be first semester grades would be recalculated into the GPA. And those grades would be listed on the transcript next to the senior year courses. So yeah. Yes, ma'am. What students would I not recommend taking virtual high school yeah, classes? Or, or 
So virtual high school classes, um, Prince William County offers um, an alternative learning um, online classes for students who, we see it at Battlefield a lot for students who are in our IT program but want to continue an orchestra or chorus or just another elective that they're interested in. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you have to pay for the class, the online class, um, and it goes on the transcript as a virtual class and it allows for extra flexibility in their schedule. So it's not a requirement that any student has to take an online class. Um, there is an online course requirement embedded in Econ and Personal Finance. So just to kind of dispel that myth, every year someone says, you have to take an online class, I have to pay for it. No, you don't. If you choose to, because it's more flexible for your child, um, someone who takes an online class needs to be um, an organized student, a self-starter, someone who's able to, um, to take on that kind of learning on their own. I think a lot of students who take online classes um, can be surprised at the fact that they're doing all the learning themselves, all the reading, and they really underestimate the delivery of instruction that comes from um, the teacher's lessons and the classroom discussions and things like that. So um, Virtual High School has a very comprehensive web page. They have demo classes. Um, they describe what, um, in a, what type of student would best be suited for an online class. So they would answer a lot of questions. Well, thank you so much again for coming out on this Saturday. Best wishes to all your students for all the success.